greetings royals Greetings, royals. Greetings, greetings, greetings. How are the royals doing today? Greetings, greetings, royals. We are alive, we are alive, we are alive. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are the royals doing today? Trust we're all doing great. Trust you're all winning. And trust you're all conquering. Okay, so we are ready. Just trying to set up this. I'm sure you're wondering why does you always put this background to some uh, uh, music? <laughs> It's a special instrument that ministers in a very special way if you can understand what it means you know it's a very special instrument it's a song that ministers so I it ministers to me so dearly whenever I sharing the word it encourages me all right, so how are the royals doing? Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. This is Rati Shalom. You're all welcome, royals. You're welcome. Thank you for participating. You're all welcome. So we are ready to share the word of God. We came a little bit early because we want to also finish on time. We want to finish on time. All right, um, now, before we begin with the message for today, I would like us to take some time and show some gratitude to our Heavenly Father. Like we always do, royals, you know, we take some time to thank God, to appreciate Him. You know, um, appreciating God is not like something that you can say, oh, it's a once-off thing or I do it when I feel like you have to be grateful to God at all times and you know when you look at your life I can guarantee you you have something to thank God for you know so we are thanking God for the week that we had we are thanking God for divine health we are thanking God for our families there's so much to be grateful to God for royals and you might not list all the things that God has done for you one by one you know but I can guarantee you that you can, you know, always have a way of showing some gratitude to God for everything. And we have to do it at all times. We have to do it. And uh, before we start, I would like to apologize for those that participate on Instagram. You know, for the past like two Sundays, I noticed that while we are in the middle of the uh, message, the network will cut off and we can we somehow lose the video on the instagram page so like if that happens you don't receive a message for that particular sunday just go to our youtube channel or come to our facebook page at you know youtube channel is at fountain insights tv and then a youtube uh, i mean um there's other social platforms facebook and is um at fountain insights change so please kindly bear with us for that all right so let's just go ahead and show some gratitude to our heavenly father whereas i'm going to start the message right away because of time all right so what are you grateful to god for what has god done for you god done for you i believe there's so much so just take some few seconds we're not going to take much few seconds to thank god to appreciate him you know for what he has done for you for your family and so on then we can begin let us thank him father we thank you in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ for your love for your greatness for your glory 
upon our lives. Lord, we are grateful to you, O oh God, for all that which you're doing for us. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for all the blessings that you bless us with. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for your word that is being made manifest in our lives. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for your presence. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for your anointing. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for blessing us throughout this whole week. We thank you, O oh God, for protecting us. We thank you for our families. We thank you for love, for unity. We thank you, O oh God, yes, for always showing up for us at all times. We thank you for providing for us wherever we have, whenever we have needs. We thank you, O oh God, for you are our supplier. We thank you, O oh God, for we never lack because you provide for us. We thank you, O oh God, that even in the midst of challenges, we find solutions because of your glory and your love. Lord, we thank you for your presence even now. We are grateful, O oh God. Thank you for the word that we're going to share this morning, this afternoon, this evening. We thank you, O oh God, that it is the word that will minister to our spirit this very moment. It is the word that will take us to another level in our spiritual lives. Lord, we thank you that your presence is in this place. For you said, where two or three are gathered, I'm there in the midst of them. It doesn't matter about the distance or the number of people or those that are participating, but it is about your presence, oh God. We thank you that each and every one of us will receive that which you've prepared for us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for even those that are participating, that will be participating, that will watch even later, oh God. As they are watching, may they be ministered to. As they are watching, may they receive, oh God, the web that you've prepared for them through this platform in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, so we are ready, Royals. We are ready for the word. Um, I hope you had a glorious week. I hope you really did have a glorious week, Royals. And, you know, our last week, I was looking at the message that we shared last week. Last week was Word Feast, right? And, oh yeah, this this is a new month of June. It's a new month of June. Happy new month of June, Royals. It's going to be a glorious month, I tell you. All right, so last week we had Word Feast, right? And we were sharing. Please go to our YouTube channel and listen to that message. It was that message. You will be blessed. We were talking about the importance of the scriptures and the importance of understanding the scriptures. You know, um, this is something that the Holy Spirit has been ministering into my spirit. You know, regards to understanding. Regards to understanding. Like when we're doing the things that we do, do we really understand? When we're praying, do you understand what we're doing? And so on. Like there was so much that we shared on that message um, on Word Feast Royals as we were discussing some Bible scriptures, which I'm trying to remember did we finish the scriptures? I'm not sure. But I think we did the scriptures that we're supposed to take. I think we did. All right, so we spoke a lot about prayer. We spoke a lot about meditation, about affirming, studying of the scriptures, the importance of doing that, and why we, you know, we have to understand what we are doing. Now, as I was meditating as well this week, the Spirit of God, you know, like for the past three, four weeks, like five weeks or so, it's been a really serious spiritual journey, you know, in terms of, you know us developing ourselves for better you know there's something that i have i was curious of and i kept on asking the holy spirit whenever i feel that i'll ask you know um i noticed that there's some of the things that the holy spirit dropped into my spirit that became a concern on us as god's children you know we you may ask yourself okay why don't i have certain things why are certain things not happening why as much as i am praying one or two things are not you know are not manifesting let me use that word or like you feel like it's taking time for you to be answered one way or the other you know like i was having so much of questions on so many things and so on and i was 
communicating with the Holy Spirit and asking God to guide, you know, and say, God, help us. You know, we have so many questions as God's children, whereby, you know, we ask like, okay, why are these things not happening? Why is it taking long? But I'm praying, but I'm giving, I'm doing this and so on. You know, God, I give you my time. I studied the scriptures and so on. And the Holy Spirit said, you need understanding. And we, we, we touched on that last week on understanding. And it dawned on me and I said, God, like as we do the things that we do, do we really understand what we are doing? Are we aware of what we are doing? And do we understand the, 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 the benefits of doing whatever that we have to do? And like one of the things that, uh, I mean, some few things that the Holy Spirit identified, like helped me pick up. You know, which is one of them was understanding. Said so we need to have an understand uh, any. I mean, understand the importance of having an understanding of the scriptures. You know, and then I said, okay, that we see. We spoke about that, right? We touched based on that on the importance of understanding. And now, as I was also like meditating on the scriptures, trying to, you know, you know, when you are praying and you are asking God questions, I love to ask God questions, have a conversation with God, you know. And then the other thing, the Holy Spirit kept on saying, okay, the next point, because now you have an idea that you need understanding. Now the next thing is uh, one of the challenges that you may i mean as god's children you may have is the fact that you know as much as you study this the word you pray and so on but you don't practice i was like you don't practice you know when you say practice we talk about activating the word putting it into work there's a difference between talking the word there's a difference you know, there's a difference between talking and acting. There's a different affirming, assuming, meditating, and so on. You know, there's a part that we as ghost children, for us to see changes in our lives that we have to do, that is to practice. How often do we practice? How often do we put the word to work? I would like us to look at the topic for today the title is into practice i was trying to find a way of putting this topic i was trying our like, take a take a take i mean take a step step of faith and so the Holy Spirit said eh, eh, practice into practice and i'm like into practice i'm like okay we will say it as it is holy spirit okay i get you said practice now let's find out what is the meaning of practice when you say practice what do you mean when you say practice? Practice, when you say we are putting the word into practice, when you say you are putting the word into practice, when you say you are practicing, I think I really touched a little bit on that. I'm not sure if it was on an inspiration for you is one of the messages when I was talking about there's a practical part of the word. You know, we pray, we affirm, we do all sorts and so on. But there's a practical part of it that is really crucial and it's important. It's, it has to be done. Now, to practice is the actual application or use of an idea. That is what the dictionary is saying. Belief or method as opposed to theories relating to it. Excuse me. <clears throat> now, let me take the main point the actual application or use of an idea application exercise use those are some of the the, the the words now when we say you are practicing you are saying <coughs> excuse me I don't know what happened to my throat when you say you are practicing you are saying you are putting the actual word or idea into action right <clears throat> excuse me i'm trying to find myself in my throat <laughs> okay so now it says the actual application or use of an idea and then the spirit of god gave me some scriptures scriptures that i would like us to look at um 
you know, the first point that the Holy Spirit said was, <coughs> excuse me, like we as human beings, which is something that we all know, royals, like it's rare for people to judge according to the spirit. It's rare for human beings to judge according to the, like, you know, the, 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 the mind of God. We are human beings, you know. It takes the spirit of God, it takes you to really be fully of the spirit to, like, to, to judge in a godly way. Now, let's look at this scripture. First Samuel, I'll try to be very fast. Verse 7, right? What does the book of First Samuel, because we have many scriptures, we need to take all of them. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. God does not see as a, as a mortal who sees the appearance. The Lord looks into the heart. So now this part was talking about the king, King Saul, right? I think that was King Saul, that... Um, you know, when you look at the person, like, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this thing this way. You know, when you, you can look at the person with the outer, you're like, woo, this one is like this. Woo, this one is powerful. This one is strong. This one is, you know, ah, this one is rich. This one has money and so on. You judge with the outer appearance. But God doesn't judge that way. He judges with the, it says the Lord looks into the heart. God looks at the heart of the person. That means God looks at the inner side of the person, you know, and the Spirit of God said, the way we judge is not how God judges. You may look at a person and say, wow, this one has got everything. This one is all, you know, he has everything. She has everything. She's all, she's a package. She's, you know, as you are looking at the outer side, God is looking at the inner side. So now and then the Spirit of God said, as much as we look at the outer side, there's the inner side of it. God looks at the inner side. So now when he is looking at the inner side, he's looking at you as in, are you doing what you have to do? So we might look at ourselves, you're like, whoa, you're at church, whoa, you go to church, oh, you, you know, you're prayerful, oh, you know, and all those kind of things. But when you look at yourself deep down inside, is when you will find the true you, the reality of you. As much as we can see the outer you, you know, look at you from the outside like, wow. There's an inner side of you that might not be what the people are looking at. Because God looks at the heart. So now when he's looking at the heart, he's looking at your maturity, he's looking at how you handle things is looking at how you deal with things is looking at how do you understand that is why we looked at like understanding so you might look big from the outside but the question is do you really understand what you're doing do you even know how to do it do you practicalize and in your practicalizing it you know do you come back with results so that's why the spirit of god said we need to put the word into practice, not in a form of just talking, but there's a practical part of it. So when we are looking at people, don't judge by the outer person, don't judge about, I mean, by the outer look, don't judge about uh, on how they dress, how they look and so on. You know, that doesn't define how mature they are. That doesn't define how baby, babies they are that doesn't define how big or whatever you want to call it they are you know what defines that is their inner man god looks at the inner man and then while we are looking at that looking at yourself like when you judge yourself you can look at your up here your outer man and they're like whoa i look beautiful hey i look great yeah i'm really powerful i'm like this and then 
look at yourself from the inside like be honest with yourself i think we spoke about this during an inspiration for you when you are being honest with yourself looking at yourself from the inside you know judging from the inside with the eyes of the spirit will you really be proud of how you are handling the things of god will you really be proud of how you are practicalizing the word of god will you really be proud of the results that you're getting in your life or it comes back to are you really into practice are you practicing the word and that's a personal question royal that you need to answer yourself like okay i'm praying yes and so but am i really honest with myself am i really practicalizing the word because what god wants is us to practice the word let's take some scriptures right philippians chapter 4 9 let's look at philippians 4 9 we're going to take scriptures like in a fast way so that we can just conclude the message now the whole idea that the why god brought this into our attention is that he wants us to be aware of what we have to do he wants us to be i mean he, he loves us like that like he, you know he loves us in a way that he wants to see us grow he wants to see us achieve he wants to see us you know doing so much but in doing so there are things that we need to put in place there's something that we need to do you might think you're doing it but maybe you're not doing it enough so he says you need to practice okay you want to achieve you want to result you want to see things taking place you need to practice and you need to practice the right way now Philippians 4 9 says practice a good attitude and God's peace will be with you whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you so, so whatever that you have learned whatever that you have heard whatever that you have seen right you know we're talking about the word of God we're talking about you know the scriptures we're talking about going to church we're talking about you know going to meetings and so on you know what god is saying is all of those things that you have stored into your spirit all those things that you have stored into your mind all those things that you have witnessed all those things that you have had all the things that you have learned he's saying put them into practice and the god of peace will be with you so there's a part that we need to act on we, there's a there's a role we need to play there's something that we have to do for the results to be made manifest he says put it into practice that means apply it it's not enough to talk it's not enough to affirm it's not enough. you need to put it into practice you need to go and activate it put it into action so why is the spirit of god bringing this into our attention because it is time it is our season it is that time for elevation it is, it is that time for growth for expansion it is that time for you know for stretching god wants us to stretch our abilities god wants us to stretch our faith god wants us to grow god wants us to activate he wants us to put it to action so it's like put it into practice into practice that means practice what you have learned practice it how many times have you written notes down how many times have you written ideas down how many times have you heard have you learned things and you just kept them in the cupboard you just close the notebook and put it on the side of all the things that you have wrote of all the ideas that god has given you of all the revelations that god has given you of all the things that god has said right it, this is it or whatever you call a name this is it how many of the things that he has given you have you put in have you put them into practice or it's all about procrastination every time you're procrastinating oh i'll do it tomorrow i will try it i will i will i will i will the results that you're praying for the results that you want will not come when you don't practice so that means god wants us to put into practice let's take another one 
So it's all about practicing it, right? You know, you go to school to learn. And when you learn, what do you do with the knowledge that you have acquired? You have to put it into practice. After, otherwise, what is the purpose of you going to church? What is the purpose of you going to school? What is the purpose of you praying? What is the purpose of you doing all the things that you're doing? If you are not putting it into practice. Do you know we have uh, Hosea 4, 6 says, My people destroy for lack of knowledge. You know, and also Timothy says, Study to show yourself approved. And then he goes on to say that, be ye doers of the word. We'll look at some of the scriptures. I'm already quoting that. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So of course, when you just hear, you learn, and you do not do, then you will not have the result that you're praying for. So that means there's a part that we need to play. First Timothy 4, 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that they... That thy profiting may appear to all. Then verse 15 says, Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them. So that all may see your progress. It is clear. It says practice these things. Practice them. Put them into practice. Activate your faith by doing them. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them. You go to church, pastor preaches to you, you receive the word, like the word of God talk, I mean, I mean, God talks to you through pastor, you receive the word. Ah, the word is so powerful, I received, oh my word, I received, I received, I received. The moment you come out of the gate, you have forgotten everything that pastor has said. You get home, you begin to see things, you are like, why? Why me? Why this? But God has already given you the scriptures. God has already ministered to you through the platform. God has already given you the solution so that when you, like God prepares you ahead, the messages prepares you ahead, the word, the scriptures, the prayer, everything prepares you ahead so that when you find yourself in a situation, you practice. So you only you don't only practice the word because you are faced with adversity. You practice it even there's no if there's no adversity. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that you it says all may see your progress. It is only that when you practice, you put them to work, you apply them, those things will produce results. You will see progress in your life when you practice. You will see progress in your life when you pray. You will see progress in your life when you study the scriptures and apply them. You will see progress in your life when you do what the word of God says you should do. You will see progress when you apply that which you learned. You will see the progress in your life. When the spirit of God tells you affirm, you affirm by faith. Your mind is in it, your spirit is in it, everything. You practice whatever that the Spirit of God tells you. You will see the progress. Why? Because you practice. Your part is to practice. God's part is to put it, everything into manifestation. He wants you to practice. And so probably, you know, that was the message that Pastor was sharing. You know, so when you practice, you practice the word and then the progress will be seen in your life so go back to yourself ask yourself paul said examine yourself be honest with yourself royal ask an honest question to yourself how many of the things that god told you and have you put them into practice how many you will notice that there are some of the things that really there are gaps Maybe the reason why you don't see the progress that you ought to see is because you haven't practiced. Like it says, practice these things, immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Matthew, the scriptures are short for today that we're taking. Like they're short but many. Verse 3. Right. Matthew chapter 23 verse 3. Oh, therefore, whatsoever they bid, you observe. That observe and do. 
but do not says but do not ye after their works for they say or do uh, uh, okay let me take the this is what let me look at the NIV vision let's take the NIV version so you must be careful to do God is talking to us you know through the scriptures so you must be careful to do everything they tell you but do not do what they do for they do not practice what they preach so you must be careful to do everything they tell you but do not do what they do for they do not practice what they preach you know it is the bible says that be ye doers of the word not hearers only deceiving your own selves are you aware that you know there are people who can share like anything ideas knowledge through whatever platforms or anything at all whether it's a book or whatever they can receive ideas i just can come and they present them in a very beautiful way and you would think man that's why um samuel i mean god said to samuel you look at the outer wall uh, outer man but i look at the heart i look at the inner side of the person when things are presented to you in a very beautiful way you'll be like whoa this is really beautiful man this one is a genius this one is strong this one is powerful this one is smart this one is intelligent but behind the scene in their inner man you do not know that what they are preaching is not what they do it is possible for you to say something that you do not do but then say don't be like them you must practice what they preach i mean wh what you learn right but if you may have found yourself in that situation it's not too late for you maybe you have shared ideas maybe you have done this you have you have not come up with ideas initiatives and so on you have like wow this is it you know you go and pop out ideas information and so on you share you give out but you're not doing what you are sharing then the spirit of god said these are the things that we need to search within ourselves these are the things that you need to search within yourself talk to yourself examine yourself are you honest with your spiritual growth with your spiritual life are you honest with what you're doing are you honest with the with the things that you present are you honest with how you handle things in your life are you honest with yourself as you take that idea as you go out you know presenting your business presenting your product presenting you know it's just like somebody who sells a product that he doesn't consume there are people who sell product who are good marketers who are very good at presenting ideas at presenting products at selling out but selling out things that they do not consume and this book was saying you need to practice practice what you are sharing consume what you are selling consume it practice it you have received the word you have heard the word you have learned the word go and practice it don't be found on the other side of the of the group of people that talk but they do not practice you know it's it's one thing to say it's one thing to practice don't be in a in a, in, in a category of those that will just ever talking or bombarding or selling but they don't consume consume what you are selling consume what you are learning consume what you have received consume it practice it practicing it is where you will see the progress in your life spiritually and in all other areas of your life you know this is not judgmental this is not judging what does the word of god says the word of god is for correction for rebuking right it is for 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 for, for aligning you for putting it you in, into place so whenever we receive the word of god the word of god is not for judging it's not judging it's not condemning god doesn't condemn but he corrects he as your child he will correct you 
he will correct you maybe you are a business person in your business you are selling out you all you are thinking of is money all you are thinking of what you need to benefit out of the business they must buy they must buy but are you aware of the product that you are selling are you using are you consuming it is it working for you because you cannot sell what is not working for you you cannot sell what is not working for you it ought to work for you first it has to work for you so the spirit of god kept on saying we need to put the word of god into practice one of the reasons why we might not be seeing um results in our lives is because we are not honest with ourselves we are not honest we are receiving information we are receiving knowledge we are learning yes we are acquiring we are bombarding ourselves we are storing it inside one information after the other it is so much in such a way that it is constipating in us it is causing constipating more because now it's struggling to come out because you are not letting the the the, the system flows of practicing it if we can eat the right nutrients of the spirit we eat the right protein i mean i mean in nutrients everything that has to do with our spiritual lives you know there will be fruitfulness there will be results god guarantees that that there will be results in everything that we will practice what because we are flowing we are flowing the reason why you find complications here and there is because everything is just stuck there there's no flow of the spirit of practicing it because the principle is to practice is to practice so when we practice the results will show up how often do you practice what you see how often do you give advice to others and practice as you give the advice let's take another scripture i need to try to be very fast right now oh yes yeah, my time is glory to god let's try to, to run on the scriptures john chapter 3 verse 21 you know because the whole idea of this message that god has showed us is putting us i mean putting it clear for us is because he loves us he wants us he is concerned about our growth he like he he loves us you know when you are looking at your child and you see there's no development there's no growth you'll be concerned you'll be like man let me find out what is the problem what's going on why are you not growing why are you not becoming why are you not why are you not getting there and then you will search within the child search and realize ah there's a challenge i see what the challenge is you are not practicing right i'm giving you things to learn i'm showing you i'm guiding you but are you doing it so now the challenge is you're not doing it right so put it into practice practice it let's see it says prove me Test me if I will not do it for you. So you are not practicing. Now you are aware you're not practicing. Then start practicing it. By practicing it, you will see the whoopy results. But whosoever lives by the truth, truth comes. John 3, 21. But who, whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. So that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the spirit side of God. Let's look at the NIV version. I'm not sure if this is what NIV version. Glory to God. Let's see. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. So that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So you know when God gives us, you know His word is God Himself. You are aware of that, right? Of that, right? God Himself is the word. So when He gives us the word, He's giving us His light. And then when it it is seen plainly, the result will be that has been done in the sight of God. So when God gives us this word, he's instructing us, he's showing us through his word. When we do it, it becomes plainly. That means God has approved it. 
There has to be results. Those are principles. He put it, he, he said it, he put it that way. What he wants us to do is to put the word into practice. Then he takes his own part by making sure that it comes to manifestation, that it becomes reality. Now the question is, are we taking our part? Are we playing our part? Are we doing our own part? That is practicing it. Because when you are practicing it, that means you are putting your faith into it. Because you cannot just believe in what doesn't work. You cannot just do what you don't believe. You cannot just put, you just say, ah, let me just do for the sake. There won't be results. Your faith has to be in it. As you practice it. Yes, you know, practicing is, is like saying, God, I believe in you with that, like that. I believe in everything that you have said. What is the word saying? It says, as you put it to work, I it, it will produce results. So how do you do it? You go to the word, you search the scripture, you look at the scripture, and then you go and practice that scripture. You put it into practice, you apply it. And then you are saying, God, I have done my part and I believe in you. Practicing is the faith. When you, you put it into practice, you are activating your faith. So without you, you activating your faith, there's no results. Could it be that there are certain things that we haven't received because we are not practicing? Let's look at Romans. Let's look at Romans. Romans chapter 12, verse 13. I will try to be very fast. Romans 12, 13. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. So this one is talking about how we take care of other people. I think we spoke about this last week. I think it was only an inspiration for you, if I'm not mistaken, talking about the importance of us doing good to others. The importance... Okay, the Bible, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that do unto others as you want them to do unto you. I was, funny enough, I was sharing the scripture with, you know, my daughter. You know, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Practicing hospitality is practicing, like, you know, putting to work the, the, uh, the, the work, the, the love of God, like practicalizing the love of God. Right. So when God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. So here he's talking about when there are those that are in need. He's talking about those that may ask for your help. He's talking about those you may come up come across with those that need your help and so on. So practice hospitality. Like be a solution. Be of help. Spread practice the love of God. That's when you demonstrate. The love of God, the the, 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 the the help of God, and so on. Depending on what the Holy Spirit instructs you to do. Maybe you have to share love. People are desperate. They're going through situations. You practice your hospitality by, you know, being of help in terms of sharing love, guiding them, counseling them, and so on. You know, giving maybe his clothes or food, whatever. You know, making them feel at home by doing so you are practicing it they cannot look at you and say god doesn't live in you they will say god lives in this person because of what you have done practiced you cannot be a child of god and you are a mean person you cannot be a child of god and you don't have love you are full of hate you cannot be a child of god and you don't practice love you have to put it into practice. And you are wondering why some of you, the prayers are not answered. You are wondering why God hasn't given you certain things. But you are saying, I'm praying, God, I'm praying. But your heart is so hard. People come to you every single time for help. You are, you are not there to help. You are not there to help them. You are closing them out. You are closing your door. So that they can stay outside. And then... 
they look at you tomorrow you're like oh can we go to church or oh, go to church or oh, do you know jesus and they're looking at you like you you are preaching jesus the way you are the way you handle people the way you talk to people the way you look at people you know so when you practice what the word of god says what you have learned in terms of hospitality loving other people showing the love then you will see the fruits of it you will, you will receive love back you will receive care back you will receive you know hospitality back you will also be a stranger in certain places you will, whatever that you have sown to others you will reap that's practicing it how often do we practice what we share I think I need to round up right now Royals. I'll try to be very fast let me quickly take the other scriptures what's the time Ooh. Romans chapter 1 verse 32 thank you precious Holy Spirit I believe this is going to really help us royal in terms of our growth becoming better you know growing discovering the, the uniqueness of God you know uh, Romans 1 32 they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve Okay, what is this? Oh my way, where am I? What scripture did I take? They know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. Yet they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Maybe it seems harsh to say that a gossiper deserves to die and that envious people deserve to die. Okay, he is talking about... You know, it sounds very harsh, yes, of course. The scripture sounds very harsh. But it's talking about, you know, when you don't practice the word of God, yet, the, let, me, let me leave this scripture. Holy Spirit, forgive me. Yet, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. Maybe it seems harsh to say that a gospel deserves to die or that envious. Holy Spirit, help me. I want to leave this scripture. I'm leaving it for a reason. Can I leave it? Can I leave it? Let's take the next scripture. I'm going to leave. Please just go to Romans chapter 1. Start from the top until to the end. So you can understand. I don't want to get into this part of it without, you know, the right knowledge. I don't want to send out what I don't understand or what I didn't receive or what I'm I think um, I didn't get that one right because I don't want to you know we have to be careful of the things that we say Holy Spirit help us you know we, sometimes it's okay to just let things you know doesn't take anything away from you you have to go back to it and read it and understand it that's the importance of understanding the scriptures. Now we're talking about putting into practice, right? Second Peter 1.10 Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort, says make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Then 11, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Right. Now here, uh, when you are confirming, let me put it this way in my own understanding right now. When you are confirming your calling or uh, your election, you know, Obviously, there are many ways of confirming your calling, your election, and so on. But now, what I want us to put it, as we are talking about putting it into practice, how do you confirm the word? How do you confirm what God has instructed you to do? How do you confirm your assignment? By putting it into practice, right? For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When you put it into practice, doing the right thing, let me give you an example. For example, soul winning. When you go out and win a soul, you go out and win souls, right? It's, it's more of like confirming 
your i know there's another angle of confirming your calling and your election or in particularly on this scripture but the angle that i want to take on on that very same scripture while we are learning based on what we're learning today is that you can confirm your calling your election as a soul winner as a child of god who is called who is sent out as an ambassador by practicing whatever that god has told you to do it says go ye into the world and preach the gospel right it says go ye into the all nations go ye into the world so what does it say it says you need to go out and practice so that means you having a response of the souls coming to you responding is because you have put it into practice you have gone out and win as and won a soul you have gone out and invited somebody to christ right then it says you will never stumble there's no way you can be a child of god a soul winner and stumble why well, if you are practicing what he told you to do right and then there are other scriptures that we're supposed to take i'm looking at the time there's I want us to actually go to the book of Luke chapter 4. Let's go there. Luke chapter 4. The word scripture, um, I'll take the NIV version. Now, there are other scriptures that, we, that we're supposed to take. Like 1 John 3, 10, Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, Matthew 6, 1, Hebrews 5, 14, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 7 to 8, John 13, 17, 1 John 1, 6. 1 John 1, verse 6. I'm not going to take those scriptures because I'm looking at the time. Unless if we still have got another, I mean, more three minutes. All right, so let's look at the book of Luke chapter 4. This is Jesus right now, right? Jesus um, was led to the wilderness, right? And, you know, I mean, when Jesus... I will read it right now. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Right. In his fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus full of the Holy Spirit left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Where for, for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them he was hungry. Now you are fasting for 40 days. I don't know if you've ever done a 40 day prayer and fasting. You know, those things, those kind of fastings are actually done when you are really instructed by the Spirit of God to do so. Anybody can if you, you know, but make sure that the Spirit of God has really led you to do so. And there has to be results in those prayer and fastings. You know, Jesus, full of the Spirit, Le left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Yes, you will be hungry, very hungry. I did my own journey, it was something else. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, Is it, it, it is written, Men shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up. Um, to high place and shown him, uh, showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to every, anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from there, for it is written, he shall, con he shall command his angels concerning you to guide you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to, I mean, God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Now, during those seas, that time, Jesus was praying, Jesus was feeding, he was practicing the way, he was studying the word. You know, you can imagine the investment that he made. You know, when you are investing in the word, you know, investing into the scriptures, investing, investing into the spiritual things, you will be so tempted. The temptations that will come, they will come in all angles. Health-wise, you name it, spiritual-wise, you know, 
all angles, financial wise, you you name it. But during those times of being tested, what do you do? You practice, you put the word into practice, the word that you are learning, the word that you have learned, you apply it. Listen to this. Now Jesus leaves, right? Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Now it's super loaded. And news about him spread through the world. So Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogue. And everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth. Where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day. He went into the synagogue. As, as was his custom. He stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Was handed to him. And rolling it. He found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind. He is, I mean, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he wrote up the scroll, gave it back to the attendants and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son? They asked. So now they were asking each other, Is this not the same? Is not the same Jesus that we know? And so on. Now, when you look at this, when you read further down, Verse 31, then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath he taught the people. They were amazed as he is teaching because at, I mean at his teaching because his words had authority. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon, an impure spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Go away, what do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know you. I know who you are, the Holy, the Holy One of God. Be quiet. Jesus, Stanley, come out of him. Now, the work began. Jesus was now practicing what he was trained for. So now you can read this wall by yourself so that you can understand. Now, what does that mean? You know, Jesus himself put the word into practice. He practiced the word. That's where miracles took place. He cast out devils. He healed. He, he you know, he, he, he taught the word. Well, because he put the word into practice. Without putting the word into practice, there are no results. When you put the word into practice, there will be results. Now, I want to conclude. We're supposed to go back again to Joshua 1 8. This book of the Lord should not depart out of your mouth, but that shall meditate in him there, and that may observe to do. When you meditate, you observe to do, then you put it into practice. Right. Please read James 1 22 to 26. I'm running out of time. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus do? He applied it, he put it into practice. So talking is not enough. It does not get the job done. You have to do. So these are the notes that I was putting. Then now the Holy Spirit said, You need to understand what you must do. Jesus understood what he had to do. He understood why he had to do it. How to do it. So you need to understand what to do. You know, the reason why maybe we do not practice, you don't put the word into practice because you do not understand what you have to do. You need to understand what you have to do. You need to understand how to do it. And you also need to understand the importance of you doing it. By so doing, it will be easy. Right? So we need to practice. The reason why may not... Maybe the reason why you may not practice is because you don't understand. And the other reason of not practicing, it could be maybe it's ignorant. You don't have enough information. It could be oppression. You know, the devil can oppress you to understand why he doesn't want you to practice the word, to put it into action because he knows when you practice, you'll be, you have results. So oppression of the devil can cause you not to put the word into practice. Ignorance can do that. Laziness, when you are lazy to do. And also carelessness, when you are careless of the scriptures, careless of the information, careless, you receive the information but you are careless about it. You don't care, you don't just, you know, then you will not understand. So that's when 
you look at people and you're like, whoa, this one has got everything. You know, looking at being powerful by talking, being powerful by all those kind of things, doesn't necessarily qualify you to be, you know, to, to have results. Because we look at the outer, say we, we assume, oh, this person knows what he's doing, oh, they know what you're doing, oh, you know what you're doing because of your outer image. It's not about the outer image. It's about practicing what God says and then the progress of the results, the progress of the report, the progress of the manifestation of the work of God in your life is what would determine. Or, or, or I mean, we, 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 we talk, we, we result, we show up as whether you are practicing the word or not. So we need to find out the importance of the benefits, the impact of what you practice. And then, you know, one thing that you ought to realize, understand is that when the power of God is injected into your spirit, when you, when the, 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 the word itself is injected in you, in your mind, in your spirit, in your body, in everything, you will do it. When you understand the importance of doing it, you understand the importance of, you know, how you have to do it, why you have to do it. That's why we need to study the scriptures. You understand the scriptures. You study to understand them. So that when you go out to practice, you know exactly what you're doing. Because we need results. God wants us to have results in our lives, in our spiritual lives, in our finances. You know, we need to understand the right principles of us to apply so that we come back with the results when you have the right information you will know how to practice it glory to God so we need to practice put the word into practice that's what the spirit of God kept on saying put the word into practice when you understand how to do it why you have to do it how to do it why you have to do it and you understand the importance of practicing the word and coming back with, with results you will practice it. You will put it into practice. Glory to God. If you're not born again, maybe you're listening to me, you're watching me, and you're like, ah, oh, you know what? I think I have an idea of what you're saying. You know, let's talk about business seminars and so on. You go and listen to some beautiful seminars. You come back, you don't practice. You know, you just went for, for nothing. You have the information, but you're not applying it. You're not applying the principles to your marketing strategies. You're not applying the principles to your to your coach calling. You're not applying the principles to whatever that you need to do for results to come. I mean, to be manifest, to be made manifest. Same applies with the spiritual life. We need to put it into practice. Right in conclusion, let's just leave those that are not born again. In case you're watching me and you're not born again, you are like, you know what? I think uh uh uh. I, I really need to receive Jesus Christ as my personal savior because you know when you want to practice the word you need the spirit of God you need to be energized of the spirit you need to be fired up you must be there must be like a charge up in your spirit that charge up is the Holy Spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit you will not understand the importance of practicing putting the, the scriptures into practice if you're watching me and you're not born again, maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you don't know anything about God, you don't even understand anything about the Holy Spirit, I would like to lead you into salvation, the prayer of salvation right now. I would like you to say this prayer after me. You know, the Bible says that in Romans 10, now you, for you to be born again, you need to confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So that means you need to say this, the, the, uh, means speak with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the, your personal Savior. For you to be born again. I know I'm, I'm, I'm fast right now. I'm being fast. I'm trying, looking at my time. Glory to God. So I would like you to say this prayer after me and mean it with all your heart. Say, oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right now, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit right now i declare that i'm saved i'm born again i'm a new creation in christ jesus thank you father for saving me i'm born again in jesus name amen congratulations if you have said this prayer you are born again you are now welcome into the kingdom of god you can send us an inbox talk to us dm us whichever way you want to do it you know so that we can guide you 
send you some daily devotional books, you know, articles to read that can help you on your journey of faith now that you are born again. Because you need to now understand why you have to practice the word, how you need to practice it, and how you should practice it, and what you need to practice the word. Of course, you need the person of the Holy Spirit as your teacher, as your standby, as your guide, as your advocate, as your counselor. Without the person of the Holy Spirit, there are so many things that you may not understand. So you need to understand all those things that it takes so much effort in terms of investing into spiritual things, you know, learning, praying, and so on. So there's so much to do, royals, for you to really learn how to put the word of God into practice. Glory to God. I hope we learn so much, Royals. For all of us who are born again, who are God's children, and maybe we have got some challenges here and there, looking at your spiritual life, trying to examine yourself from the inside. You're like, man, I think right to say one or two things that I'm not doing right there. I ought to do them right. Yes, go ahead. Start all over. That is why we go to church. That is why we, we grow. That is why we study the scripture, so that we can learn and be better. Better. The word of God is for perfecting us, to make us better. So practice the word, put the word into practice, learn, go to church, learn and put them into practice. Even in your business, go for business seminars and put them into practice. The knowledge is important when, it, I mean, it is more effective when it's being practiced. Wherever you find yourself in, in whatever field you may be, it's not enough to receive information and store into you. You need to practice it. Practice in prayer. Pray, study, affirm, say the scriptures, talk, meditate, do all you have to do. Spend some time interceding. Do everything that you have to do. That is putting the word into practice. The results will be sure, will be guaranteed. Glory to God. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the word that we receive today. We thank you, O oh God, for the spirit of enablement. We are enabled in, into our spirit. We thank you for the ability to put the word into practice, to understand the scriptures, to understand when we learn, to understand, have the right information in our lives and put it into practice. Lord, we thank you that as we go out in our different places, in our workplaces, in our businesses, in our jobs, in our families, in all areas of our lives, O oh God, we put your word into practice. And as we put it into practice, we come back with results. Lord, we thank you for which not ask the how. For the how is for you, O oh God. Our role, our own part is to put the word into practice. From today, our lives will never be the same. Spiritually, physically, materially, financially, and in all other areas of our lives. As we put the word into practice, we have results in our lives. Father, we will not be lazy. In the name of Jesus. We reject every spirit of oppression. We reject every spirit of lessness. We reject every spirit of ignorance in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we are full of the word. Our sp our minds are sound. We receive information. We receive the revelations. We receive the scriptures and we put them into practice. Lord, we thank you. We are energized from the inside. We are equipped from the inside to do. We are here. We are doers of the word, not hearers only. We do. We here to do. And as we put the word to work, we come back with results in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for this month of June. That is going to be a, an effective month for us, a very productive month. As we put the word into practice, we have results. As we put the word into practice in prayer, in studying, in affirming, in every era of our lives, we come back with results. It's our great month of June, a month of results, a month of testimonies, a month of effectiveness. We are effective in our spiritual lives like never before. In the name of Jesus, because we put the word into practice. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this great week ahead for us. We are effective in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. Thank you so much, Royals. We have really shared so much on today's word putting the word into practice glory to god that is all for today royals i hope we learned so much and as we put the word into practice we come back with the results glory to god so that is all for today royals this is right to shalom i love you all so dearly have a great week have a, a glorious week ahead and also have a glorious effective productive fruitful a month of June with testimonies. It's going to be an effective month of June as we put the word to work in prayer and in all other areas of our lives. We are effective. We have results. We are growing. We are making progress. It's our month of greatness. 
effectiveness like never before. Why? Because we put the word into practice. Glory to God. I love you all so dearly. Like I always tell you every time, stay blessed, stay connected, stay in the word of God. Don't move an inch away from the presence of God. God bless you. Enjoy your new week and happy new month of June. Our month of effectiveness, our month of productivity, our month of testimonies, miracles, progress, elevation, growth, you name it. That is us. Glory to God. I love you. Once again, stay blessed, stay connected, stay in the word. This is Rati Shalom. See you again next Sunday.